This, my name is Lynn Shakespeare. This is an update of what happened since I contacted the State Bar Association to try to get some help over a problem I have with Mark Howitson and Mark Zuckerberg. If you ever listen to the history, Mark claimed that he got the business plan to start Facebook from a friend. Well, it was all a lie. And over the years, I've tried to come forward, and every time I tried, one way or another, I was blocked. Or nobody would listen to me. I am the one that originally came up with the business plan. I came up with a plan using experiences from my personal friends. The original business plan, if, when the business got started, and I projected how much it was going to make, it was supposed to have funds taken from that that was supposed to fund free clinics, homeless shelters, help to support me with bad health, help to support one of my female friends that became paralyzed from meningitis just after starting college. The problem is, I let Mark stay at my home. He found out that I was trying to start this business and he thought that he could do it with his friends faster than I could. And he hounded me because he wanted me to let him use my business plan. And there was a go-between. There was a Mark Howitson that was a friend of Mark Zuckerberg, but also went by Marcel Elliott Zuckerberg. And he was coaching Mark on what to do and say. And they eventually got me down to a percentage that if I let them use my business plan. Then the lawyer suggested that we do a video business agreement. And then when Mark got back to New York, they were going to get it in writing. The contract was going to be drawn up and I would sign it. It didn't work out that way. Mark did the video business agreement. Once he did it, he wouldn't give me a copy. I asked him for a copy of it. He said, well, I said I was a player. I questioned if you could trust me. Then he told me he didn't want any recordings taken of him to prove that he was there at my home. Then it gets worse. Before he left, he managed to steal my business plan in a portfolio and a camera. I wasn't able to contact him. All the contact information that he gave me was either no good anymore or it was bogus. Well then when the Facebook battle started, Mark Howitson called representing Mark Zuckerberg wanting me to give a statement that Mark got the idea and the business plan from me first and while Mark was trying to get investors to help start it, I talked to another Harvard student on the phone second. Well, I wasn't, I, was, I wasn't too happy about that phone call because Mark took me. And I said, hey, Mark, am I going to see this return? He said, it was all his. I didn't have to, he didn't have to pay me a dime. He said that I, he shouldn't have to be held up to the agreement. Before the phone call ended, they threatened me. To never come forward. But somewhere in the middle of there, when they're trying to get me to give them a statement, he said, well, at some point you'll most likely see 15% in stock. I've never even seen that yet today. He left me absolutely broke. And what happened created such a problem for me that it's absolutely shocking. And later on in some other videos, you're going to find out what happened to me. Well, he kept on trying to go forward and, and get help, and nobody would listen. Well, when Mark was here, the government was watching my place pretty hot and heavy because I was a witness to the pre-events to the 9-11 attack. Well, when Mark was here, you know, this was a few years after that. But the 9-11 commission was going on, and they didn't want me talking to nobody. So the entire time Mark was here, he was being recorded right along with me. Well, my, my position changed. My health got worse. I got diagnosed with Emory Dreyfus muscular dystrophy and a disease called Shrogan's. Two of the worst diseases that people could ever get. I need 
needed a return from my business plan that I never got. And I don't look like I'm ever going to get it. Well, I really don't think that these people should be going on in life and not have any kind of a reprimand for what they did. So we decided to check a different route. We decided to contact the Bar Association over what the lawyer did, since the lawyer coached Mark how to rip me off. He used his position, his education, to coach Mark what to do, what to say, to take everything. Okay. Well, it sounded like from what who we, we we talked to that we were in the time limit. We could still go back on the lawyer. We contacted the bar association. We told them what happened. When the phone call came here from Mark Howitson representing Mark Zuckerberg, there happened to be two other people here that witnessed that phone call. And the voices were loud enough on the phone that they could hear what was happening. And one of those people that was here just happened to know Mark. They were surprised about what happened, but I didn't keep any contact information for him when they left. Well, when my health got worse, so we decided, you know what, we got to try this one more time. I went to the extent, even though I don't have much, to try to find him. And I found him. I found the two witnesses. They were willing to come forward. I contacted the Bar Association and told them, hey, I got the two witnesses. They're wanting to back up the story of what happened that day. Well, the Bar Association kept on dragging it out, dragging it out, dragging it out. And then I got an email from the one, and he says, I'm really sorry, but they offered me $500,000 to sign a non-disclosure agreement not to reveal what happened that day. Now, isn't this interesting? Somehow or another, the information that I give the Bar Association wound up in the hands of the other people so they could pay them off not to speak. Well, when Mark Howitson called here the first time, my mom talked to him. Well, guess what? Mom talked to Mark Howitson again. Mark Howitson says, well, I feel okay that the time limit has gone past now that I don't have to worry. So he's not going to get in any trouble. So like a, so like a, a thief with, a, with an education, he figured out the timeline that it's been far enough now that he don't have to worry about it, that he did wrong. He said he no longer works for Mark, he no longer works for that firm. And if we want a copy of that call log, we'd have to try to contact that firm. And he said, good luck. Two hours after that, approximately two hours, we get an email from the Bar Association. They dismissed the case. Kind of convenient, isn't it? Now, don't you think that at the very least, Mark Howitson and Mark Zuckerberg should be held accountable for ripping me off? When Mark Zuckerberg first came into my life, I had an eye injury. I had vertigo really bad from vestibular migraines. I was having all kinds of serious health problems, and that was the last I worked. The last I paid into Social Security. And then during that time, I'm dealing with the government coming down on my ass for being a witness, knowing that the event of 9-11 was going to happen a year and a half before. I don't think I deserve to be out completely. Now I'm at a point where I got a disease where I can't support myself. After the 9-11 commission was over with, Somebody from the government contacted me and said, you are owed a really big favor. 
So when this happened, and they dismissed this case, I wasn't going to drag the 9-11 bit into it and tell them about what was going on when Mark was here. So I got so mad, I contacted the FBI and I said, I want some of that footage that you guys took when you were here. It proves that Mark was here. They sent me a four-page letter stating all the reasons why I couldn't have it. I tried to ask from the top for help because I was told if I ever needed help, I was allowed one big favor. And I told them at the Bar Association what I was told. And they said, well, they'd have to look into it, and I had to write an appeal. Well, I wrote an appeal, and I went through every bar rule that Mark Howitson broke to instruct Mark to do what he did, including threatening me that if I ever came forward, they would cause me trouble. They said they would create it. I, I'm mad. I'm really f downright furious. You guys look at Mark like, oh, he's so great. You think he's a philanthropist? What is 15% worth that I never got? For stealing, because he stole my business plan, and never got my 15%. So anything he ever gave anybody is out of that 15%. And then I had the feeling that, you know, or I was hoping that maybe he was going to do a little bit what I wanted to do. You know, help the free clinics, help the homeless shelters, you know. I said, you know, we got to find a cure for these neuromuscular diseases. And I didn't know at the time I was going to wind up with one. And his girlfriend, it's now his wife, she was here at the same time. And she got a job in the medical community. I mean, these people are some of the lowest freaking low lives I've ever freaking seen. So they left me now with these horrible diseases. If I'm lucky, I won't wind up in a wheelchair, but it sounds like I'm going to wind up in a damn wheelchair. And how am I going to survive? It got so bad for me, I had to file for disability. I couldn't get disability. You know why I couldn't get disability? Because of politics. I was told that because I went against the, the pre-event planning of 9-11, that somebody asked a judge for a favor to reject my disability. So numerous lawyers came in trying to represent me at the very end for free. No charge. But the disability, the Social Security disability drug it out until there was no time left. Well then when I found out I have muscular dystrophy, I, I didn't like, wow, what are you going to do? You know, I don't have no choice. I file for SSI. No. Oh no, no. I can't get SSI either. You know why? The government seems to think I have access to great wealth. Well, if you think I got access to great wealth, why don't you help me? Somehow, these people need to be held accountable, even if I never see a dime. Now, there is one other Harvard student that knows what happened, because I talked to that one other Harvard student on phone. Now, I'm betting that when they sued each other over the ownership of Facebook that was created from using the business plan that I created, one of them probably signed a non-disclosure that couldn't reveal that. Well, I'm going to tell you something, guys. This, this, this is going to end very badly for me because I've lost just about everything. And my options are down to almost nothing, and, I, and then how am I going to survive? So you know what I'm waiting for? I'm waiting for the door that says the end. I can't handle this anymore. And when you look at Mark, you look at his wife, 
You look at Mark Howitson. Remember the low-life acts that they did. In fact, say it to them. You're a low-life. Show them an L. You're a low-life. And when you see Facebook someplace, if you're getting tired like me of seeing it, put an L on it. Representing me. That you know what happened. You know what the original name was going to be? The original name was going to be My Journey. Because there was a paralyzed 20-some-year-old girl that couldn't get out of her house. And that was going to be her way of keeping in contact with people. I mean, this is the lowest damn thing people could have done. You know, I, just think about this for a moment. Think of how many people that was going to get help from free clinics that couldn't get it, that are now are dead. Because of one spoiled brat that stole a business plan out from under somebody that needed it desperately. Well, I'm going to do something that nobody's ever expected. And I'm not really going to like it, but I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to do some more videos, and you're going to see what happened to my life after what Mark did. Because I wound up on state-funded health care. See, that's what I was trying to keep those people away from. Because they get experimented on. And then you know what? You owe for their experimented care. Then from any time you make anything in your life, at the very end, you got to give it all away. you got to give it back to the state. I think that's right? No. I was trying to, to help people for that wouldn't happen. And now that's the exact same position that I'm in. I'm mad. I am really absolutely freaking furious. <clears throat> and this muscular dystrophy that I have, you wonder how I found out? The Obamacare started. Well, the Obamacare actually gave people more options. I didn't want it, but you know what? It saved my life. And the experimenting stopped. And as soon as the experimenting stopped, it was only just a few, minute, few visits and they figured I want to have. A genetic test, a muscle test, my CK level enzymes, muscle enzymes were high. Wow, this is why I've been sick all these years and I could have got help. So start looking for a video that will be showing up because I'm going to show you what happened to me. And it's going to be downright shocking. And every time you look at Mark, and you look at Mark Howitson, and you look at Mark's wife, or anybody else that got a benefit from Facebook. Remember me. Remember my paralyzed friend that got screwed because of this. And all the people that freaking died. Thank you.